welcome back to another edition of Simply Fit. I'm your host, Sandy White. And remember, we're on a mission to save 1 million lives by encouraging individuals to live a Simply Fit life through health and nutrition so that they're able to overcome suicide and depression. And today's guest is, we had our last seg, uh, last season, she's Essie McGege, but before we jump into all of that, I do want to thank WYTV7, Christian Broadcasters Network, for allowing Simply Fit to be on their network for the third season. Guys, go on to the website, wytv7.org, and check out all of the wonderful things that we're doing in the community. And while you're there, please make a small donation or a large one. Just help us to continue to bring wonderful broadcasts like this one to the nations. All right, with that being said, let's welcome Essie to the show. And I just want to remind you guys a little bit about her background. As I mentioned, she was on last season before she jumps on. She does have uh, multiple um, specialties in medicine. She um, cares for patients in areas of internal family, critical pulmonary emergency care medicine. She uh, is the president and the chief executive officer of the uh, All Chemical uh, Center of Change. And that's a wellness center that is in uh, the heart of Manhattan and also uh, New York City. She'll correct me on those locations once she gets on. And also she does have a book that will be coming out Hopefully at the end of this month, she'll let you all know that, but she's a sought after international speaker on, and she's a health coach. And the reason she's here guys is to talk to us more about COVID-19. Now I let you guys know at the beginning of this season that I didn't have a sister that passed away on the 30th of December due to COVID. And what we want to talk to you guys about are the symptoms that you can be, uh, be made aware of. And and Essie's going to go into a whole lot more that, you know, in the medical field, because I'm not in the medical field, what you guys should be made aware of, because we know there's a lot of confusion going on. So this is why Essie is on the show again today. So welcome to the show, Essie. How are you today? I'm doing very well, Sandra. Thank you again for having me back on your show. And thank you, WYT7, for having me here as well. Um, <laughs> I think uh, you said it all. I, I don't have anything else to add to that beautiful bio you just. Oh, well, thank <laughs> you. Listening to you, I was like, oh, is that me? <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is you, my love. And we are so grateful to have you on. So as I mentioned, there's a lot of back and forth going on. Um, and we don't want to finger point. We could do that all night. And it's still not going to bring back those 400 plus million individuals that have lost their lives. What we want to do is make sure that people know what's going on now so that they can they can pr properly prepare themselves as well as their family members. Now, I, I do want to ask you a question on whether or not, like I know um, the sprays, Microband 24, and then uh, what's the other one, the Lysol, I know they're helpful, but to what degree, if you, if you have... Um, some information on that, basically so people can get an idea of how they can protect themselves as much as possible from COVID and then who's possibly at risk because, um, I know, and I'll repeat anything that you need uh, me to repeat because I know at one point they were saying the elderly, but my sister wasn't even 50 yet. And I know she, she had underlying conditions, but then there are some folks that are young that have underlying conditions and they, they, they have challenging times, but they pull through it. So kind of help walk us through what we need to know about the different sprays and who is at risk. Oh, thank you, Sandra, for that same great question. So anyone who's uh, exposed to COVID is at risk. So which includes all of us, <laughs> you know, <laughs> because this is, a, this is a pandemic and we're all exposed to COVID. Um, again, the, the CDC uh, really emphasized in terms of like, what is close contact? So in other words, if you are in close contact with anyone who is COVID positive, that puts you at risk. 
you know, and close contact is defined by if you are within six feet of that person, or if you are, you know, if you are around someone who's been coughing and coughing up all dro droplets on you, you know, that's considered close contact. But if you care for someone who had COVID, you know, those are all co uh, close contact. So anyone who is within close contact with anyone who tested positive for COVID, and that could be anybody, you know, because how would you know who's positive for COVID, who's, you know, out there, you know, you are basically at risk. So in terms of, in, in terms of like uh, um, sprays and, and all that, um, I really don't get so particular in terms of like what spray, because that all depends on, because <laughs> I don't advertise one product over the other. I try to stay away from that. But what the CDC advises is good hand hygiene. You know, as long as you're washing your hands, if you are contaminated, if you are touching any uh, contaminated objects, you should, be, you should be washing your hands. You know, so frequent hand washing, um, and then also just being conscious of, um, you know, those contaminated surfaces and also bringing contaminations into your home. So like a lot of people, you know, when we go out on the train, we wear, you know, our, our regular clothes that we wear on the train, when we come back inside the house, we, we go and sit in our beds, you know, and we know that, you know, these droplets can be passed on to our clothings, right? And we go and now sit into our, on our beds or we hug our family members. Those are all modes of trans transmission. So just bringing consciousness uh, to that, how you know, how can I transmit this uh, virus to one, one person to the other, you know, I, that helps in terms of like reducing the spread. So therefore, definitely hand hygiene is one of them. Do not pick on your nose, you know, with your hands. <laughs> you see a lot of people just, you know, out of, you know, reflex, they're picking on their nose and their faces, you know, when, especially when being outside and, um, you know, in, in the public or going shopping or and, and things like that. So that was, I, I like what you just said, and I did not, and I, I'm thinking a lot of people are not even thinking you're out and about. We, it's not like a sign, a neon sign says this person is infected, but it could get on your clothes. I, that wasn't even on my mindset. So with, with you sharing that immediately, you know, not sitting on your bed, things like that, come in and change your clothes. Should we be spraying the clothes down? And um, do you know how long that the symptoms or... Um, I don't even know. I'm going to say droplets because I'm, I'm not educated in the medical field to say the right term and you'll correct me on that. But how long if, you know, not knowing or knowing or unknowing droplets possibly be on, on your clothing items, how long does that last? You know, because folks don't know. That's another great question. <laughs> so what I do, my practice is as soon as I get home, you know, right at the door, if you, and if, that's if you can, you know, afford that. Uh, when I say afford that, if that's convenient actually for, for you, you know, I put like a, a, a not, not a garbage, uh, a, a, a bin where I, I res where I put my, my dirty clothes right at the, at the door. So what I do is I take my clothes, as soon as I get in, you know, I, I take off my clothes and I put it at the, in the bin there, the wash, the wash bin. Um, that way I'm not bringing in anything from outside into my home. Um, and that also pre, uh, helps me in terms of reducing the uh, amounts of cleaning that I have to do in my home. So once I know that, you know, I've cleaned my house, I've disinfected my home, I can, I can leave my home that way for a few days without having to do that again, because I am conscious of what I'm bringing back home. So I do that too, also with groceries. So with groceries um, that, I, that I buy from the, from, from the shop, as soon as I get in, right at the door, I have a separate uh, area where those things go into that require that, that needs to be disinfected. Um, so that's what I, I, I typically do. Um, I'm aware that not everyone can be able to do that, but if there is a way you can um, adopt those a kind of practice that helps you to limit how much you bring in into your house in terms of the um, the stuff that are out there, like as soon as you get into uh, the public setting, uh, limiting a, a way to disinfect those, those uh, things that you're bringing into your house, um, I would definitely encourage that. Um, and then what was the other question? <laughs> I know you asked me another question. Oh, it, it was just how long, you know, knowing or unknowing, you were saying what the droplets could be on your clothes, how, how long, because if you are not in a position to drop the clothes in a wash bin, you know, right away, how, how long should you like not wear those clothes or, or yes. touch them or something? 
Right, that's a very, that's a great question. And I know that the CDC has a, exact details on how many, because depending on the surface area, it depends on how long those, um, the, the COVID virus leaves on the surface. So um, I don't want to speak out of, <laughs> out of my head, but I know that on hard surface, and you correct me uh, if I'm wrong on this, when you, so don't quote me on this, but I know up to, it can leave up to four days, um, but they are different depending on the surfaces. Um, so, but there is a lot of information and, and I think that's a, a great information information that people should uh, research and know in terms of how many how many days can these viruses stay on my clothes or stay on um, on, on whatever surface um, whatever items that you have and the CDC has a really great uh, guide uh, to guide us on that but I know that for for most surfaces it can stay the viruses can stay up so for a few days on on okay. on the surface so it's really, really key that you are disinfected. Um, the, the stuff that are coming, your groceries, you're taking off those um, clothes that you wear in public um, and just having a way to disinfect them. So I have, I'm, I'm gonna jump back to the groceries. You were saying how you um, disinfect or clean them or something like that. So it, it, are guidelines on the CDC website for, for folks to know what to do and wiping down their groceries? because I've not, I, I've not done that. I mean, we go get them and we literally just put them up and that's a good idea. I know that's a, a lot, that's an additional step, but if it's going to help protect you, what, what procedures should they be doing? Like take a baby wipe or a Clorox wipe, wipe their cans down or something like that. <laughs> Sandra, I'm trying to stay away from promoting any products. Oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, yeah, you but don't what, have to what, say yes. yeah, no, <laughs> what, what, I, what, I, what I mean, yeah, what, what I mean is usually with all surfaces, it should be wiped down. You know, whether they come in the form of groceries, uh, with clothes, we can easily wash that. But these uh, surfaces are a way, well, that's one way we transmit this virus because they, they, they do. When you sneeze, when someone who has uh, COVID, you know, the way we pass on uh, COVID to one another is through droplet and also through air airborne. That's what the studies are, are saying. So in other words, you know, they, someone sneezes, and that's how they shed the, the true, they shed the virus, right? By, by sneezing or coughing, coughing those things uh, out, let's say into the, into the air, or what, that, what we consider, what, it's called droplet without getting so technical. Um, and those droplets now go onto the surface. So let's say um, a grocery, in a grocery store, you know, someone sneezes and it gets onto that surface. And then somebody goes and pick up that grocery and buy it and take it home. Without the without the knowledge to wipe that up, they, they are obviously trying and uh, contacting the virus through those through, through that way, you know. So that's one way, and uh, and that is I think it's uh, uh, people don't think about those <laughs> that that's a possible source of contamination. But I, uh, I I think that you know if anything you know if I'm able to bring that awareness today, uh, you know I'll be uh, I'm happy <laughs> to be able to do that. Um, but yeah. Okay, so let me uh, ask you this one. Um, there are two two more things. So now I also heard the doc, um, double mask or or, or three layer mask. So just because it's already hard for you to breathe in one mask, and I think those the initial masks they're already two ply, and so um, I think I I believe the one that I just purchased has three layers. Or is he saying where two like? The original, and then put a an additional one on top of your face because that's kind of hard to. And then, um, and I know you don't want to get into name branding, but um, how would people know if they're getting the right three ply? Because that's what they're saying now. Because the new strand, the new virus has an additional um, strand that is more lethal than the the original um, COVID nineteen strain. The top nail that's out there. Uh, what I'll say is that you know it shouldn't change. As the same practices that you did that kept you healthy up to now uh, shouldn't change. So con continue to wear your mask. Continue to social distance. Those are those have been proven effective ways in reducing the, the the virus and reducing the spread of the virus. It's you know wearing mask, safe distance. You know isolate if you think you've been exposed uh, to someone who had COVID. Um, and then obviously, you know, you also want to boost your immunity. You know, these are times where you want to make sure that you're eating right, you're sleeping right, you're hydrating yourself right, and doing all of those things that you would do uh, if, you know, you went down with, let's say, even a, 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 like a common like flu, 
you know, so it's, it's just, you know, just consciousness, consciousness to your health practices, you know, will, will get you a long way uh, uh, through this. So um, outside of, because you said hydrate and, you know, making sure um, that you're keeping your safe, yourself safe, you know, what you were doing prior up to, but if people were not doing this, zinc is good, vitamin A is good, vitamin C is good, D is good. What else should they add to that mix? So I would say uh, a diet with full of antioxidants. So in other words, plant-based food, you definitely want to be eating a plant-based, uh, a portion of plant-based uh, food in your meals every day. You want to have a portion of plant-based food in your meals. So that includes like vegetables, um, um, garlic, uh, ginger, you know, just fruits, you know, fruits and vegetables. And the reason why is that they contain um, high uh, antioxidants and uh, which help boost your immunity. So that's is very helpful. Um, also too, what I do encourage is those deep breathing exercises, just as a habit of doing them, because one of the advantages of um, the deep breathing exercises is that it stimulates your vagus nerves and your vagus nerve actually controls your immunity. So by just doing deep breathing exercises, you know, you're actually boosting your immunity as well. So those are just simple things that you can do on your own to boost your immunity. And those are just natural things. So just deep breathing exercises, uh, eating antioxidant, uh, food. So that's plant-based food. Uh, you want to be resting, you know, you want to make sure that you're drinking a lot of water, you're drinking enough water. Uh, for females, at least uh, uh, three liters of, of, of water daily. Um, and for males, even uh, a little more than that, you know, and then, you know, you also want to make sure that um, if you, if vitamin C, I do encourage vitamin C as well, um, only if you need it. So when I say only if you need it, a lot of us, we take vitamins when we don't need it, you know? <laughs> So in terms of like acute illness, I do encourage vitamin C. So let's say, for instance, if one is down with a virus or just even a, a simple uh, cold, then I'll say, okay, take the emergency vitamin C, which is uh, the emergency dosage is 1000 milligrams. Uh, you can take that up to three times a day. Um, I don't usually like to, uh, my patients, I tell my patients not to exceed, you know, if uh, two, three weeks, that's good. You know, because after a while, we see a lot of patients taking so much vitamins, vitamins that they don't even need. And that also, you know, excess of, of, of anything is a problem, you know, so we right. see problems of people taking, uh, we've had patients who come in uh, with a lot of uh, problems associated to excess of vitamins. Right. Hey guys, we're going to take a quick break and we're going to be back with Essie. She's got a lot more that she's going to share with you guys on some preventative measures that you can take um, to avoid as much as possible uh, contacting, co uh, contacting COVID-19. All right, guys, after this commercial break, we'll be right back. Swing Into Their Dreams Foundation presents the golf tournament of the year, raising scholarships for aspiring national golf club in Milton, Georgia. The inaugural HBCU Swing Into Their Dreams Charity Golf Tournament. Registration and Gourmet Continental Breakfast begins at 8 a.m. and Shotgun at 10 a.m. Award reception follows. Come enjoy a day of jazz, mimosa, cigars, cash bar, silent auction, and more. For more information, contact 770-686-786. Seven one their four. dreams. Don't miss it. Welcome back. If you guys are just tuning in, I'm Sandy White from Simply Fit, your number one health and wellness cheerleader. And we just took a quick commercial break and I hope you enjoyed Swinging to the Dream. So um, we're going to be asking Essie just a quick more uh, questions about uh, preventative measures for COVID-19. And we um, left off, I, I uh, wanted to jump in real quick. I don't know if you know about this or if it's on the CDC website, but I know I've been seeing a lot of commercials saying that they have been approved. These are the uh, air ventilation units that they're saying is supposed to, um, I guess, take out the, the virus from the air, things like that. Um, is that information where people can find that on there? Because we don't want the consumers purchasing things that really aren't going to assist them. And I want to direct them more towards CDC guidelines because that's really what they're asking us all to adhere to. Is that a good policy or practice? 
Sandra, great question again. <laughs> as far as the ventilation is concerned, this is because COVID is still pretty new and these things are still being tested. So I cannot advocate for one over the other. Um, I would say, you know, if, you know, go according to the, the guidelines. If, if research has been done towards a, a, a ventilator to say it's effective, then hey, <laughs> look at the numbers and statistics. But I can't really make any comment uh, as to what uh, ventilation or ventilation system uh, to get uh, other than, you know, open your windows if your place needs to be vented, open your windows, get natural air <laughs> and vent your place out. So um, yeah, I, 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 can't, I can't comment to that uh, okay. at this time. Because it's, it's so can you hard. give us at least, um, you know, five simple practices that uh, people can do to shorten their recovery time if they come down with COVID-19? Yes, definitely. And we kind of touched, uh, touched over that uh, uh, already as well. Um, so I would definitely, uh, to kind of summarize it all, is one, you know, plant-based foods, um, two, breathing exercises, uh, three, you want to make sure that, you know, if, you, if one is down uh, with the illness, you know, make sure you're moving around. Don't stay, um, uh, like, more, uh, immobile in, uh, in, that, in, in a certain uh, 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 environment. Uh, I want to make sure that you are moving around. Um, and then also, uh, you also want to make sure that, you know, you are getting enough rest, as we covered before, you're hydrating yourself, you know, you're boosting it, things, basically things to boost your immunity uh, will carry you through uh, during, you know, times during, uh, to prevent or will carry you through those times um, if you're down with the, with, the, with the virus. So that's the summary of it, you know, boost your immunity. So now, now these um, tips will work with someone uh, best for some, for an individual that that does not have underlying medical conditions. Yes. So it, it will work for either either or, you know, so people with underlying uh, medical condition versus, you know, the healthy ones without no medical condition. These are just practices that we should already be doing anyway. Um, but during if, if you're down with the illness, you know, it's basically what you're doing to support your immunity that really will help you uh, through that uh, through this through that period. Uh, um, so we have seen patients who, uh, you know, they, they, they barely have symptoms, you know, and then we've seen patients who really have really severe, uh, severe symptoms. And all of that depends on their uh, comorbidities. So what I mean by comorbidities, meaning what they are underlying in health uh, issues. So the food, so the, in terms of like COVID, when we say uh, uh, COVID-19, <laughs> you know, everyone knows what COVID-19 is, right? So it's COVID coronavirus disease 19, uh, which, you know, was first uh, identified in China in 2019. And this virus, uh, the reason why it's different also from other viruses is that it, it can cause death. So this is not something that we, you you know, it's like, it's like the flu. We should really take this thing very serious. Uh, but it can also, you know, it goes from mild to, to severe cases and the severe and even death. So in terms of like, you know, um, going back to, you know, your question, um, what can we do to kind of shorten that duration? It's really what you do to, what you, what you are doing to boost your immunity. Because it's a virus, meaning, you know, it's really, it's really so what we call, uh, especially for my cases, is supportive care. So what supportive care is, is that, you know, what, what are you doing to boost your immunity? You know, we treat those symptoms. We treat, like I said, pain. We treat the fever. We treat the cough. But in more severe cases, that's when obviously you need hospitalization and then we can treat with other things like, you know, antivirals, uh, steroids, and things like that. So on your own, with people who are not required, who are not that severe case, there's not a severe illness yet, or you're not severely ill, you know, what we can do at home in terms of managing our, our, our symptoms is obviously, yes, take those, take, if you are, if you're in pain, take Tylenol for pain. If you have fever, take a Tylenol or Motrin for your fevers. But in addition to that, you also want to be boosting your immunity because it's obviously your immunity that carries you through this. So, and those are the practices that we just talked about, the five practices. So, you know, plant-based diet, um, drink water, uh, make sure you get in enough rest, do your deep breathing exercises, um, and what else? I think that's about five. Is that what we mentioned, five? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Stop counting. <laughs> but I, I have a question. Um, 
I always got questions, but I do agree with you, plant-based. Um, I was telling folks to at least have one meal um, a, a day that's plant-based, but now it needs to be more often. And I, um, I don't recall if I saw that on the CDC website or not, but are, are, is that being recommended more now that people have, you know, convert their, their dietary needs to more plant-based? because um, animals are possibly catching it. And then the last one, um, just piggyback off of that, because we're, we're down to the last couple minutes and I know I wanna get as much in as possible. We, we have less than seven minutes. Um, should folks get the vaccine? And I know right now medical professionals are getting it, but if there's an opening, should they be getting it? And then I know they need to follow up, I think like three weeks later, um, touch on that because I know it's a lot of back and forth. Folks are not being able to do their follow ups if they're able to get it. I know I haven't, and I'm not in the medical. So the plant base, and is it reason being because animals may be getting it, and then the vaccine getting it, and then follow up. Okay, great, great question. As far as animals are concerned, getting COVID, there's little statistics to support that. I know they have reported that you know some some dogs that have gotten COVID, but it's really rare. For I mean, as, as of right now, there's no statistics uh, supporting that animals are actually catching these these diseases. Um, so I, that, I, that's not the reason why I recommend plant based uh, diet. I'm recommending plant based diet. It's not to say don't eat meat. I'm just saying in addition to have a plant based diet. Um, and the reason why is for the antioxidant uh, benefits in, in plants. Um, as far as the vaccine is concerned, um, definitely I would recommend that uh, we take the vaccine because at some point it becomes like almost like a civic, uh, it's almost like you could, you know, you could see it as a civic duty because it's no longer about us. It's about the other people because we don't know how the other person, how COVID is, how the other person is going to experience COVID. So some people experience very mild, and some people very severe, and some people even dead. And that's the reality of it. So let's say if I don't want to take the vaccine, then and I get COVID, it's not just only about me. It's about the other people that I I can't possibly affect because we do not live in a vacuum. We live in a society. So at some point it becomes almost like a civic duty. So it's it's not about me anymore. It's about my friends, it's about my family and my loved ones, because I don't know how the others are going to experience COVID. Um, then the, the, the third question you asked, uh, remind me what that third question is. So <laughs> the third one was the follow-up. They are recommending that once you get your initial vaccine, you should follow up three weeks later, but folks are having a challenging time getting that rescheduled because there's not enough vaccines. And then I have one more after you answer that. Okay. Um, I would definitely say, you know, it, it is true, you know, that there, is, there are challenges uh, with rescheduling that, meeting that three weeks and time frame. Um, I would say just follow up, continue to follow up with the organization that's given that, uh, that vaccine, um, and they have their own um, guidelines and their recommendations. That's each, you know, each one, I can't speak for that organization. So that would be the best uh, uh, approach is just follow up with that. Cool. Hey guys, we're down to the, we are down to the wire. We've got like less than three minutes. So um, I do want Essie to let you guys know how you can reach out to her. She did give you guys a, um, a free tool that's going to boost your immunity, which we will provide you guys with the link on that. But real quick, Essie, tell everybody how they can reach you. They can reach me at my website at uh, www.achemicalcenter.com. And that's again, www.achemicalcenter.com. It's full of nuggets. Go in there and check it out and get free downloads. <laughs> so thank you so much for being on the show again. This has been like really, really educational. So guys, take advantage of it. Rewind if you have to go to her website. And again, I'm your host, Sandy White for Simply Fit, your number one health and wellness cheerleader. We broadcast out of Upper Marlboro, Maryland every Wednesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So again, thank you for coming on the show, Essie. And guys, we will see you next week. Bye.